five. Reload here. Since we're live, let me uh, turn you on. What the fuck am I sounding? You're not working it. That was easy. <laughs> Having a little trouble. <laughs> oh, goodness. Panning. All right, I think. Check the sound. That's Russ. This thing locks up on me every week. I don't know when Russ is over his head. <laughs> All right, we got good sound. Okay. Got to do all the preliminary checks, make sure everything's good to go. How you doing, Russ? So We'll give a couple of minutes for everyone to join us, if anybody's joining us. Is there any consuming turkey? Yeah, but he's already in turkey day mode. So, uh... Steelers are three and seven. The Browns are three and seven. Yeah, well, we're duking it out for the basement. <laughs> Worst case is the Lions have got four wins. Really, the Lions are better than the Steelers and the Browns, huh? Oh, that's terrible. That's kind of embarrassing. The joke was the reason having Cleveland play Buffalo and Detroit was just so that Detroit could have two actual professional teams playing on a Sunday. Yeah, yeah, and neither one. <laughs> yeah. That's debatable. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's a terrible football season for all of us. But I'll be in front of the TV Sunday probably, watching again. What about Thursday? Are they on Thursday night? Well, I don't know who's playing. I don't know. Because Thursday's on Thanksgiving, so the oh, yeah. Lions got to play, the Cowboys got to play, and somebody. Yeah, Lions and Cowboys always play on Thanksgiving. <laughs> Russ says give something away every week. <laughs> that gets expensive. Andy likes to give away a lot of stuff when he gives away stuff. Next week. Next week he's having another giveaway show? I guess so, based on Russ's recommendation. Yeah, Russ said we got to do it, so. Yeah, I won't be here next week. I will be chasing deer around the woods once again. Yeah, I got two. There's two big bucks out there that I know of. One that I missed, and the other one. Come to find out, he's got one eye missing. I I have to show you the pictures. I was investigating the pictures, and he's uh, he's missing an eye. He must have put out an eye fighting with another deer and got an antler in the eye. Cause the the camera makes their eyes shine. <laughs> yeah, if he's on, if I'm shooting from uh, shooting at him from the right side, he won't see it coming. <laughs> but yeah, he's uh, and and then I actually I no idea. Yeah, yeah, I got no idea. Yeah, no, I actually uh went back and I was like, man, I didn't. I don't remember that. And I went back. I have pictures of him from last year, that same deer, when he was uh, a year younger. And, uh, yeah, he was missing an eye last year. And I didn't realize it. So. Lisa's been protecting him. Yeah. But a uh, pretty hardy animal to uh, survive out in the wild with one eye against all the predators that are out there trying to get him. Between humans and coyotes and cars, and I mean, if he walks out in the street and there's a car coming from his right side, he ain't gonna see it coming. So, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, I'll I'll be out chasing deer next week, and Andy will be in here, probably doing a giveaway show. Black yeah, yeah, we got uh, Black Friday coming up, and. Uh, yeah, if y'all been watching the site and uh, getting the emails, you know we got a big uh, promotion coming up for Black Friday. Uh, I think it it kicks off actually Thursday night. Uh, I I don't know. That's uh, okay. Well, 
I don't know if it's. Yeah, I don't know if we have to get Renee to acti- activate it. But uh, yeah, the Cornerstone Series handguards, uh, big. Uh, I gotta watch what I say. Yes, don't say the wrong things. Don't say the wrong. Go to the site. Check out for Black Friday. Check out our Cornerstone handguards. And you're good to go. I gotta watch what I say because if I say <laughs> if I say the wrong thing, then Facebook will take the video down. So uh, yeah, Black Friday sale. Going live this afternoon. Cornerstone handguards. Check it out. You'll like it. It's a if you're a, a budget-minded person like me, you'll love it. There you go. There you go. All right, on to the show. Okay, so uh, build versus buy. So we talked about uh, should you build, should you buy. Uh, We talked about making sure you avoid the pitfalls and the problems uh, that you can run into as a first-time builder. And today we're going to take a quick look. Uh, It won't be a real long show, but uh, we're going to take a look at when to know, how to know when you're in over your head. Um, you know, when should you stop and seek professional help or the help of someone who's done it before? Um, you know, uh, we, we've all heard this, you know, the, the, uh, the, the phrase, uh, building an AR is like Legos for adults. Well, yes and no. Um, after you've done a bunch of them, it becomes very easy, but there, you know, I mean, we're talking about building a firearm here. Um, and you know, there's a, uh, you know, you're putting a gun up here to your face and right about here somewhere, there is a 58,000 pounds per square inch explosion happening. Okay. Um, if you're not careful and meticulous about what you're doing and how you're building a rifle, uh, bad things can happen, right? That, and you know, 58,000 PSI in the explosion chamber, it goes from zero PSI to 58,000 PSI that fast, right? As soon as you pull the trigger, it's not a gradual build to 58,000 PSI. It is 58,000 PSI right now happening a foot in front of your face. So, um, you know, there's no shame in saying, hey, I'm over my head. I'm not sure what I'm doing here. I'm not sure if I uh, want, do you have the right tools, right? Do you have a torque wrench with the right wrench to torque down a barrel nut and make sure that the barrel is, uh, is fastened to the upper properly. Um, there's no shame in saying, Hey, I'm over my head. Um, don't let your ego get the best of you because it could get you hurt. Um, if you, you know, uh, we've talked about the last couple of weeks in both our, uh, sessions about having the proper tools. Um, investing in the proper tools if you don't have the resources to invest in the proper tools you know you might be better off buying an ar but eventually you're going to want to do upgrades so you're going to need those tools and you know if you don't want to invest in the tools then you're going to have to seek out a professional and that's where it comes down to you know not letting your ego get in the way i can do this you know um you don't torque a barrel nut properly. Uh, you don't torque a castle nut properly, or you don't have the torque wrench, and you over torque it, and you strip the threads. Right now, you've uh, uh, it maybe if you don't torque it enough, the gun comes apart while you're shooting it. Or if you over torque it, you strip the threads, you damage parts. Now you got to go about and buy replacement parts. So, um, you know, uh, seeking a professional. Right, if you've got the right tools. Uh, building an AR is fairly easy. Um, you watch the videos, you watch your buddies do it. Um, it's not that difficult, and that's why we, you know, we're in the business we're in to help you guys do that kind of stuff. But, um, like when it comes down to doing some actual machining, right? So uh, you want to put a muzzle device on. You live in one of those states where uh, you have to have pinned and welded muzzle devices. Or you have to, uh, you want to pin and weld a muzzle device on a 14 and a half inch barrel to make it legal so it's not an SBR. You don't have to SBR it or it's not a pistol. So um, 
that seems like something that would be pretty easy, right? You drill a hole here, you drill into that a little bit, and you put a little weld on there, and you're good to go. Okay, so one, do you know how to weld? Do you know how to weld properly without uh, getting stuff too hot and uh, malforming metal, taking this temper out of metal? Um, you know, do you know how deep to drill that hole? Uh, you know, if, if you accidentally drill all the way through, now you got real problems. Now you've changed the ga entire gas system on your gun. So um, anytime you have to do some kind of machining, unless you are a trained machinist and you have all of the proper tooling to do it and you understand exactly what it is you're doing and how you're doing it, that's something that's probably left better to a professional. Um, you know, when you have to seek out a professional, uh, we've all heard horror stories, right? Um, I took the gun to this guy and he screwed this up. I got it back and, you know, it was, you know, the whole thing was screwed up and the weld looked like a three-year-old had thrown JB weld on the thing or, you know what I mean? We've all heard those horror stories. Um, go and do a little research about you know, if you have a gunsmith that you've used for a long time and you trust them, that's great. You have a shop that you've worked with a long time, um, that's great. Uh, use, utilize those. Um, if you don't, you know, you want to go into that uh, shop. Um, you want to make sure that you, uh, you meet with the gunsmith and get a sense of who he is and what he is. Um, reviews, online reviews, right? And don't, uh, you know, a lot of guys, uh, a lot of we all, all have seen spiteful reviews. Somebody isn't happy with something, so they're going to go in, they're going to leave a bad review, and they're going to put a whole bunch of garbage down. Um, you know, you got to watch and take reviews with a grain of salt. So, uh, you know, if somebody doesn't, if it's just a, you know, and they're, they're grousing, you know, if something has pictures and they can say, hey, look, this is what was done, this is how it was done improperly, you know, okay, that's something that's probably pretty viable. Um, and you also want to look at how that shop responds, right? How did they respond to that uh, bad review? Did they come back and say, hey, you know, hey, we're, we're sorry. We, you know, bring the gun back in. Let's have a look at this. Um, what was the resolution, right? Uh, you know, some, some people will just, as soon as something doesn't go right, they want to hop online and they want to leave a bad review before they even call the shop and say, Hey, you know, I'm not happy with this. How, what can we do about this? Can we talk about this? And then as soon as they leave a bad review, the shop contacts them. They bring, you know, and, but then that bad review is still sitting there. They usually don't go back and erase them. So, uh, you know, looking for that resolution to that situation is kind of key. Um, I got some notes here so I don't forget what I want to talk about. Um, you know, if, a gun, if you take a gun into a... A professional gunsmith so you try to do the work yourself right and you're drilling a hole and bam you bust off a drill halfway through your muzzle device and your uh, barrel and you got a broken drill in there now now what do you do do you have a die sinker or something that you can try to cut that out of there do you have a way of fixing that or have you now scrapped a barrel and a muzzle device that's one of those instances where if you take it to the gunsmith and they're doing that work and they bust that drill off in there, now they have to fix that, right? That's their responsibility. Um, you know, they have to figure out how to get that broken drill out of there or they have to buy the replacement parts for you and make that right for you. A, a reputable shop should anyway. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm still trying to get over this cold I had last week. Um you know, communication between you and the shop is key. If you're using an out-of-state shop or something where you're going to uh, mail, you're going to package parts up and send them off to have them worked on. Um, making sure you understand what that shop's policy is about receiving parts, um, you know, uh, receiving the parts in and shipping them back to you. Um, putting them on the books, keeping it, you know, so on and so forth. There's a lot of nuances in the FFL world when you're shipping parts and receiving parts in and then giving parts back to people as serialized, you know, do, does a background check have to be run, so on and so forth. <coughs> so uh, communicating, even if it's an in-person shop where you're standing there 
uh, face to face with the guy. Communication in every instance of business is key. Right. Uh, we kind of pride ourselves on communication around here with our customers and with our vendors. And, uh, you know, we want to even if it's bad news. Right. We screwed something up and right. It's we're going to call that customer and say, hey, look, we screwed up. This is what we're doing to fix it. This is the time frame we're looking at. Um, you know, nothing's more aggravating than you're waiting for your gun, you're waiting for your gun, you're waiting for your gun, and finally you make that phone call, and they're like, oh, yeah, well, we screwed something up, and we had to send off for more parts, and the parts are weeks out, and, but you know, well, you should have you should have called me and told me, right? You should have got a hold of me, and, and we could have talked about this. At least let me know the bad news so I know what to expect. I'm not sitting out here waiting and waiting for my gun. Guns have deer seasons here and i don't have my gun right no <laughs> what a disaster that could be so communication is always uh key to any business transaction <coughs> um uh, you know um sometimes you're going to go into a shop and you know uh it, it can be irritating. I, I get that when they say, yeah, you know, we can't do that. That's that's not us. Um, you know, maybe take it over here, take it over there. You know, uh, I, I don't know anybody around here who does that. Um, you know, it, yeah, that's frustrating, right? Because you want what you want and you want, you want it now. We all live in the Walmart world or the Amazon world where, you know, we want instant gratification. But really, that's probably a, a sign of a shop with some integrity, that they're saying, look, that's kind of beyond the realm of what we can do. We don't want to take that on and screw it up or not do it properly, right? Um, recommending somebody else that you can take it to is great if they know somebody. Um, you know, having to begin that search yourself and finding the right shop to do that job uh, is there. There's no, there's no shame in a shop telling you that's beyond my my uh, scope of. The, my abilities and that I don't I, I don't want to mess with it right I get it it's irritating it can be frustrating but I'd rather have them say that and have to take it somewhere else than to have them say yeah yeah we can do that and then <coughs> right, right mess it all up you end up with a piece of garbage you end up uh, and then they won't honor their work and so you know what a nightmare that could be and that goes back to the communication and vetting your uh the person you're hiring to do the work for you, right? Properly vetting that uh, gunsmith or that shop that you're going to have do that work for you. <coughs> I just recently went through a small nightmare with my Ford pickup truck, and uh, I've got an EcoBoost six-cylinder twin turbocharged, what, you know, whatever this thing is, and uh, I had an issue with my cooling system, and it ended up being a uh a bad head but you know i i went through two or three shops right and i you know hey i got this ford truck blah 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 it's doing this oh yeah that's an eco boost we don't work on those yeah that's an eco boost we don't work on those yeah no, you know take it to a dealer yeah and after about the third time of someone telling me take it to a dealer well i ended up at a dealer and i'll tell you what even they had challenges they had issues it did get made right eventually but it was an all-summer project it was four months of my truck in the shop so and some of that was supply chain issues right and that's the other thing right now supply chain issues are a nightmare um taking a gun into a someplace and them saying hey we need to order parts and it's going to be three four or five weeks to get parts again frustrating it's the world we live in right now. Hopefully that world will go back to what it was two or three years ago, we hope. Uh, but right now, supply chain issues are rough. So, um, you know, it, it's not, it, you know, we have the same issue, right? A customer calls us and I want, uh, uh, I want my part, I need my parts in, in 90 days. Well... The, the the material supplier tells us we ain't gonna have part we ain't even gonna have material for sixty days, right? And it's frustrating, but it it is what it is, you know. And 
there's just nothing you can do about it. We'll we'll do the best we can and we'll hustle as fast as we can once we get the stuff. But uh, we're at the mercy of the supply chain in the world. So understand that going into this situation. Leave yourself enough time, right? Don't, uh, don't, October 15th, don't take your gun into the gunsmith and need it and expect you. Yeah, I, I need it back November 1st because that's deer season, right? And you give the guy two weeks, uh, you know, you're setting yourself up for a disaster. Make sure you give yourself enough time to uh, get the job done and get it done successfully. And uh, continue to build, continue to work on your own guns, get your own tools. And <coughs> as you develop your own skill set, um, other than, like I said, that machining stuff where you're going to be drilling. Um, oh, the other thing, one other thing I, I, I wanted to cover real quick, right? You, you've built your AR. You've got it all built. And you take it out. It won't feed. It won't fire. It won't eject. It won't, you know, any of these failure modes. There's four or five of these key things that it, it is doing or it's not doing, right? And you're you're troubleshooting it and you're... Uh, you know, you're, you're swapping. Okay. Let me try a different bolt carrier group. Let me try change tweaking the gas block. Let me try, let me try, let me try. Right. You've gone through all that list of troubleshooting. You've looked online, you've watched YouTube and your buddy comes over and says, Oh yeah, this is what's wrong right here. Take a ground Dremel and grind some of this off right here. Okay. Um, you shouldn't have to be grinding on anything on a, especially the internals, right? Anything that's internal, integral to that gun, you shouldn't have to be grinding on it. You don't want to be grinding on it. Um, it should all mesh together. It should all work, and it should work properly. If it doesn't, something is wrong. And if you can't diagnose it, then we go. We circle full back to getting a professional involved. So, um, you know, taking a handguard, and uh, maybe you bought a handguard and that has the has the old style ears on it and you've got a billet upper and it doesn't you know it doesn't want to sit right because the ears are in the way okay so that's something you can take a file and and file the ears down or maybe you can take a dremel and grind this is not an integral piece of the firearm that's going to cause it to do bad things okay now you, you'll void your warranty on that part obviously but if it's a handguard you got laying around or something, you know, that's not that big of a deal. But anything that, you know, anything that belongs to your fire control group, your bolt carrier group, any of those critical, your barrel, um, your upper, right? Any of those critical components that house that 58,000 PSI explosion, you don't want to be grinding on that stuff. You don't want to be putting it in a mill and trying to mill a little bit, you know. That's the stuff you leave. Take it to a professional and let them diagnose it properly and figure out what's going on. There's usually always an answer. Usually. Right? <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah. That's it. That's what, knowing when to get a professional involved. Uh, just don't get in over your head. Don't let your ego get the best of you. No understanding that we are working with firearms and they are dangerous and they can be dangerous at both ends right they're dangerous obviously at the front end they can be dangerous back here at the back end if things aren't done properly so uh i think that's all i've got for knowing when to get a professional involved how to vet a professional and uh how to deal with getting your gun worked in in a gun shop so that concludes my build versus buy short three session three part series um i won't again i won't be here next week andy will be in here probably giving away some t-shirts and some hats and black deals. some black friday deals maybe some pieces parts i'm sure there'll be some pieces parts in there <coughs> yeah ha have fun have a safe thanksgiving um Black Friday is live. Okay. Black Friday is live. The, she must have been watching, huh? She already texted you and said. <laughs> okay. So Black Friday is live. It's on the site right now. Go to the site. Check out the deal on uh, Cornerstone Handguards. 
All right. So uh, enjoy Thanksgiving. Have fun with your families. Remember what it's all about, uh, giving thanks for all the things and the blessings that we have in our lives. Um, Deer season starts for a lot of us Monday. And uh, good luck to everybody who's going to head out into the woods and try to get a a one-eyed deer. (laughs) And uh, be safe. And uh, we'll see you all when I get back in a couple of weeks. So uh, remember, until then, you don't have to be an expert to build your own AR to upgrade it or maintain it. We're here to help you do that. Thanks. We'll see you guys in a couple weeks.